The entire time I was watching this, all I could think about is the fact that I miss Daredevil. It has nothing to do with the show. I just really miss Daredevil. What is up, Fleek fans? Welcome back to my channel. There is a new Marvel show this weekend. It is called Hellstrom. I want to thank Hulu for giving me a chance to watch this a bit early, get my thoughts together. We're going to talk about it. Were you excited for this? If you guys like these series reviews, let me know. Hit that thumbs up button. Okay. So Damon and Anna Hellstrom are the son and daughter of a mysterious and powerful serial killer. The siblings have a complicated dynamic as they track down the terrorizing worst of humanity each with their attitude and skills. So Tom Austin and Sidney Lemon are our stars here, the brother and sister duo, one that I was super excited for. Uh, this is one comic series that I've never had the chance to read, but I did know quite a bit about it. Uh, I will say this, there are a few spoilers for the show that I may hit on, but it mostly comes down to the fact that this is based on a comic book that kind of tells you where this show is going to go. So if you don't want to know the name of the comic book that reveals one of the tiny mysteries in this show, skip about 30 seconds. Okay, the comic series that this is based on is called The Son of Satan which should tell you a little something about where this show is headed. They try to keep that a mystery through the first few episodes, but if you guys are even aware of this comic book, then you know exactly where it's going to go. But again, this brother-sister duo was something I was excited for. I didn't know which direction the show was going to go, though, because uh, from the outside looking in, this feels like a constant team. This feels uh, like maybe a bit of a supernatural, but I was hoping they would give us a comic spin to a supernatural. I was hoping this would be a visual show, a show that utilized what we see in this comic book right here, and that is an array of different colors and characters, and the visuals should have been great to pair along with this show. Um, unfortunately, it does go down the supernatural and the Constantine route, uh, and maybe even a Lucifer on Netflix. That's what this kind of feels like. Not necessarily mystery of the week because there is an overarching mystery, uh, but every single episode holds a bit something different and they encounter different characters that come back around. You guys know the shtick. Um, this show fell a bit flat for me. You have Damon, and his first appearance in the comic books, I believe, was in Ghost Rider. And it's funny because when this series first came out, it almost got canceled just due to the fact that it was called The Son of Satan. But then people began to realize that there was some fun to be had um, with this comic series and the fact that they were trying to unravel the mystery about their father and applying that to this show, a show that does end up being more of a procedural drama than anything. Uh, that was an extremely interesting idea. Jeff Loeb. Jeff Loeb is a name that you guys may have never even heard of, but uh, this was the man that used to be over most of the Marvel television shows. He was an executive producer. And uh, Hellstrom, if you guys don't know, is one of the final, maybe even the final outing for that Marvel television division that is not either a MODOK or not coming to Disney+, Plus, which we see for all of the MCU-related shows. And this show, just in case you guys are wondering, is not part of the MCU. It is one of the final outings of what we had seen in the past. They were going to do a Ghost Rider. They were going to convert all of these different things. And then Kevin Feige said, no, we're just going to go in a different direction. So, uh, unless this show gets a season two, which I don't know if it will, Hulu didn't really even market this other than one trailer, um, but I haven't seen a lot of marketing elsewhere. It's almost as if they knew that this was going to be a bit too dull for its own good. Now, that's not to say there aren't good ideas within Hellstrom. There are some great ideas, and I believe the two leads have something. They have this spark about them, whether it's the chemistry between this brother or sister, how they're both completely different. Austin's character is brooding. Um, he's this mysterious figure who has an interesting power set and an interesting way he goes about carrying himself. In the first episode, we see him uh, approach a child who everyone believes is possessed by a demon and their interaction. You just know from that first episode what kind of character this is going to be. And I liked that. I also like his sister. I think Lemon is really good. She's even more mysterious than Austin's character. But when they finally come together and you see that banter, you see that back and forth, it makes you sit back and wish that the show itself and the overarching plot and the mystery, which we've already talked about, not too intriguing of a mystery first off, and then you get the fact that something else comes into play in the final few episodes that makes it drag out even longer. I just couldn't stop comparing it to other shows, 
and you think when you're going in uh, that you're going to be comparing it to other superhero shows, but no. I think Supernatural has a lot more charm. It's less bleak, and I know I keep using the word bleak. Yes, it obviously has to do with the color palette, with the location, uh, with the fact that most of the scenes take place in nighttime, but something more visually could have made this easier to watch because when you're binging all the way through it, and not that everyone's going to do that, it does take a while. Uh, it, it is a bit of a trudge to get from episode to episode because they go off on all of these different avenues that I just wasn't as interested in. Um, I wanted it to be the brother and sister duo all throughout the show because, again, when they're on screen, it's really good. Their mother, Victoria, she's in a mental hospital throughout the entire show. She is possessed by demons, and uh, I love the scenes that took place within that hospital. I love the moments when they're able to go in and visit her and the crazy things that happen, the conversations that they're not necessarily having with their mother, that they may be having with the demon inside of her, uh, those were interesting, and that does hearken to a show like Constantine, but even then, I, I think Constantine does a better job of keeping you on your toes, and it keeps that mystery, that intrigue, um, at the forefront, as opposed to some of these subplots within this show, a couple that I think would have made good shows on their own, but when you mix everything together into one season of television, an introductory season, it just felt like they put too much on their plate and they weren't able to handle it. We do get many scenes that take a look into their past, these flashbacks that were interesting enough and added a bit of backstory. Some of them felt out of place and some of them um, cut off the tension being built in this scene and will just cut to a flashback scene. So I think the placement of certain elements here could have been switched around, and I also think it could have been shortened. I think it's two or three episodes too long, uh, and by the time we do get to a couple of interesting climactic events, I'm not sitting here saying this show is awful. I don't think it's awful, but when you have this kind of uh, hype for characters that you've been excited for coming on screen for quite a long time, I expected it to maybe deliver on that a bit better. And this isn't me saying if you like a show like this, you're not going to like Hellstrom. I would encourage you guys to maybe space out the episodes, not watch it all the way through, because it was an early screening. Uh, I was able to do that a bit, and it did help the experience. But overall, I, I just um, I have to keep using the word bleak, which doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. Again, Damon is a confident lead character. Anna is um, a mysterious figure that continues to grow on you, and we're really in this for that sibling, that brother-sister relationship with a couple of subplots and what's happening with their mother, uh, and, and that's fine. I guess that's fine. Uh, but for a show that is this many episodes and one that Hulu didn't necessarily market as well as they should have, I don't know if this is a huge recommendation for me. So as for my score, I'm going a 50%, a 5 out of 10, um, just because there was quite a bit of interest there for a few of these characters. And the subplots that worked, they really worked. There's just a bit too much here to gravitate towards and the actual style of the show. I wasn't a huge fan of. And you guys know me, I love Marvel, I love Marvel television, but when something doesn't work like this, I have to be honest with you, and I just wasn't a massive fan. But I need to know in the comments down below, how did you feel about this show? If you're on the other end of the fence and you had fun, uh, let me know why in the comments down below. And again, if you like these reviews, be sure to smash that thumbs up button. I'll be back later today with a review for the brand new show on Netflix, Grand Army. Appreciate you guys big time. I'll see you soon.